Then, yeah. on the bus, first of all, uh, finally we can draw an end to the transfer window. How do you reflect on it in general? From the transfer window, is it? Yeah, from the business that you've done. I think the club has worked uh, very hard for the last season, despite we were in embargo, to identify targets that could help us. The club was prepared, already saw it last season, they were prepared for contingencies and for positions and for and for guards that we needed to fill. In general, the whole transfer window, I think, has landed for the club uh, options. Options that make a squad more competitive, make a squad with a little bit more flexibility and with a little bit more dynamism. Uh, in general, I'm happy with the, with the team that we are. It cannot be the other way. As a coach, you always have to be happy with the team. That, but I'm happy because I think uh, everything is set and it's balanced in a way that we can use it to, to compete and to, and to try and win football games for the football club. It's always that point. You always end up a little bit, uh, a little bit having a little bit of a down on the thing that not all the transfer targets have been, have been coming, but obviously that's normal because you cannot have everything in life otherwise. Everything will be so easy, but in the end of the day, I'm happy with the squad that we have. There's no other way to think about it, to do it. I'm, I'm, I'm so focused on, on, on helping them to, to know each other, to, to gel, to understand how everyone plays, what this club means, how this club has been playing, and how this club wants to move forward. And they all bought into it and just are really looking forward for the fans to give them this little time that every player needs to be able to adapt and to and to and to play the, the football. And the two lads that you brought from Spain this week, what, what do they bring? What do they add? Alvaro Alvaro Jimenez came here because he's been the maximum goal scorer in the championship in Spain. So he's a player can team up with 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 Chucky up front. It will give us this kind of options as well. And it might require a little bit of time for him to settle on that because in the end of the day it's a different kind of football but he's a player who scored <clears throat> a lot of goals in another league. As soon as he settles, it, he, he can score goals. Um, that's his, his main goal, really, and then help the team as much as possible. Um, with, when it comes to Fran Villalba, he's a player who did a really good season as well, played almost every game in Numancia on loan from Valencia. Numancia is a, a tough team to go and play for, and he played almost every game. Uh, we got reports when the club highlighted him, I asked for my own reports, spoke to Valencia manager, spoke to, to his manager, Numancia. Everything ticked the box. He's a very, a very offensive player who can link as well. He's very, he's very, he thinks very quick, plays very quick, and I think can support very well the strikers coming, coming from the midfield. And that's something that adds you offensive options despite not being a striker. That is, I think, one thing that we want to, to encourage. And are those two guys ready to play? Could they feature tomorrow? Well, uh, we're waiting. We got the uh, clearance for for Alvaro. We got. Uh, we're waiting for the few details. We're optimistic regarding the clearance for for Fran as well. And uh, they've been training for us for us um, two days already. So it's possible that they, they, at least they're, they're able to 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 be selected. Yeah. And Jefferson, I understand that in the case of waiting for the paperwork as well, will, is it likely to come through too late? It's difficult for me to say because I don't know how the FA works, um, but I, I, I understand that after the transfer window, uh, the FAs are really, really busy. So I hope that uh, we have time to, to do it today so the player can, can come here. Uh, otherwise, if he's, if he's not able to come here and he has not been training with us, probably he will not be able to feature tomorrow. What do you learn about your team? Saturday, obviously, the first competitive match with, with you as the main man, and approaching tomorrow, Bristol City, how, what have you changed, what have you worked on? Uh, very specifically, we considered two chances on Saturday, in the beginning of the game, that we, we could avoid it, especially one was from one corner, the other one was from a throw, and these chances can be avoided. We were very, very hard on, on on understanding how this came from, and I think it was one of them. It was two mistakes actually, a little bit of uh, of this kind of focus that 
you get slowly during the season. You know, in the beginning of the season, you don't have it, and they were quick getting out. But we put a lot of work on it that everyone understood and realized. You know, so that was very important for us because I think we should have avoided those chances. And then, if we take those chances out, because they're easy, those two chances to take them out, uh, we'll have seen a game that yeah, they will have had a lot of possession, but not real control in the game. Because apart from those chances, then our team grew into the game, defended very well, blocked all the possible spaces for Brentford, had to go long to the to to Dallas court. That's the game that we wanted, and then we were strong. We lacked a little bit of converting some attacks after when we won the ball, especially second half. But that's something that comes on. But when it comes to for me analyzing the game last Saturday, I would say that I value very, very, very high the attitude of the players, the work rate of the players, and the defensive level and the game plan that the players had in their head to go into the game. I think that worked very well for us. When it comes at home for tomorrow, we've been working as well on how to try to impose ourselves and create a little bit more problems as well. Because I, I do think that we didn't create enough problems to, to Brentford. Probably because we scored early and, and we thought, well, it went for home, very difficult pitch. Uh, we have done that so often, so it's the beginning of the league, so you tend to protect that. But we did the protection part well, so we, we're working very, very hard as well to try to, to be a little bit more... Uh, more offensive as well and create more problems. Thank you. Good Thank you. Thank you. Pam, over the next few weeks and months as head coach, how much are you looking forward to, to moulding this team and, and, and scoping them and shaping them into a team that, that fits the way you want to play? Yeah, very much. I'm looking forward to, to have a few weeks with them, especially time for them to know each other because in the end of the day, the players, they need to know each other and they need to know how, what how everyone likes to play, what kind of balls they want to receive or what kind of supports they make. And this is something that playing, the players will get the knowledge of, of themselves as well. The good thing is that we have a solid group uh, that's been working together and a lot of the defensive steps are there. So we're trying to gel players to help us on the offensive side as well and for them to learn all the defensive structure of the game or how we, how we play. I, I really look forward for us to have clean weeks like last, like next week, for example, so we can spend as much time as possible on the training, training pitch, uh, know, know, knowing about ourselves and knowing how we want to move and how we want, how we want to play, really. We now have a big Spanish contingent at the club. How quickly and easily do you think those players will integrate, given the help that you and, and Paco have been providing? Well, really, it's been, the academy has done a, a massive job on trying to change the way they recruit and the, they brought a lot of a lot of players who are on the under 23s basis. They're not really uh, related. But when it comes to to the first team, apart from uh, Agus, there is in between us and our sister club Cornellà, we have these two Spanish players. They, I told them because I've been here five years now in England, and I, as you know, I love the English culture and I love everything. I told them how important it is for them. I said, listen, everyone loves Spain here, you know, because. Everyone loves Spain, the sunny and going there, like Tom's been there. And just, <laughs> but, and you love it as well. But in the end of the day, we are in England. I want you to buy into the culture. I want you to, to learn the language. I want you to understand what football is about here and what this club is about as well. Otherwise, uh, this is not like going to another Spanish football club and coming there. No, no, that's, that requires a lot of more work, more effort from you, and you need to do that. But I saw. I saw a mentality of wanting to, because I saw two players, Alvaro and Fran, with the will to do it, with the will to get into it. They're desperate to, to play for the club, they're desperate to get into the stadium and, and train. So, but that's, that's been my advice, and I advise them as well how, diffi how different it is, the English game compared to, to the Spanish game, what are the differences, and, what, and for them to have a little bit of, of a head start, if possible. Yeah. Uh, a few lone players. Uh, a few young players went out on loan. Sorry, Isaac Vassell, one of the permanent players uh, and outgoings. Ideally, would you have liked to bring him forward to have replaced him? It's like I said before, in the end of the day, as a coach, you want to have all the forwards of the, <laughs> of the championship in the end of the day, you know? all the options and, and have a, a lot of things to do. But I do respect, because I, I was here yesterday watching Bristol the whole day, watching and analysing Bristol and watching every player analyzing their recruitment, the last thing, the last minute thing. So I saw all the hard work that this club put yesterday into the transfer deadline. And, and I cannot say anything else that 
we gave we gave it a good go at everything, and and we landed a lot of the places we wanted to land. Some others they can't, but you can't have everything. But in the end of the day, I'm happy to where we are. I think we are better now than we were two months ago. Or sorry, a month ago when we started. And in the end of the day, now it's about work in the pitch to try to get them all together. The majority of the additions to the club seem to fit that bracket of young, talented, but with potential and a point to prove. Was that a conscious decision from the club to go in that direction? Yes, I think I think so. And I think it's important to to note as well that I will add that all the players who came here, they have a, a point of point to prove. I agree with you, and a and a hunger. They are hungry to to achieve results and to and to leave a mark uh, on the club. And not only them. I saw it as well in, in our players, I saw it in our captain, and I saw it in, in the senior players, you know, and I saw it in the most experienced players as well, as well as the youngest. And even for the young ones, because this club proved on Tuesday that if you work for the club and you develop and you have the talent, you will have an opportunity. So, and that's in the end, I don't know if it will take one season or two seasons or three seasons or whatever season it takes, but that's the way to get the club moving forward having everyone very hungry. And I see that there with everyone around the club. You mentioned those young players who played against Portsmouth on Tuesday night. Bearing in mind what you saw on the night, are any of them ready to, to push it into the, the starting squad for, for a league game? It's not easy because there's a, there's a little bit of a gap yet for them to, to cover. But, but the good thing is a few of the players, they're not that far to be part of the, they're already a part of the first team. Mm -hmm. And they proved that as well on Tuesday despite the loss, but they proved it with their performances. And uh, in my opinion, uh, we can cover this gap very, very quick and try to help them uh, have a, a big chance. On to the Bristol City game. From yeah. a personal point of view, how proud will you be standing in the technical area tomorrow? Yeah, well, I'm always proud to be in St Andrews because I love it. But in the end of the day, as I always said, and it's something I do believe, it's not about me. It's not about me. I'm the least of important one there. The important thing is what our players do in the pitch. What I would like is to try to get into our players that how can be even more hungry than Saturday? How, how can we give our supporters that, that spirit of togetherness that we have? How can we transmit that? And the only way to transmit that is to to go for the game from the beginning, to take it with a lot of maturity, to take it with a lot of hunger. And, and that's what makes me proud tomorrow, not the fact that, that I'm there, because in the end of the day, uh, I'm, seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm not that important there. Uh, you've said before, you can't ask much more from our supporters, given how they were last season. Would it probably take a little bit of time and patience from, from the early stages of the season to see us at our very best? I think, I think that, the supporters might might be a little bit like like I said before, every fan, every football fan in the world wants to have the best possible team. And when it comes to a transfer window, they want to compete with all the rest of the teams to get the best players. We did that. We competed with everyone else to get uh, to try to get our targets. On some we succeeded, on some we don't succeed, and on some we managed to, to get a no one succeed time or zone. So in the end of the day, we've done it. And now it's about the time to give the squad that we have that little time that they need to know each other, to gel themselves because they just came, to get behind them, back them, and, and help them to try to get us as far as possible. You said you spent time looking at Bristol City already. Oh, yeah, a side to. that narrowly missed out on the playoffs last year. Are you expecting a tough test tomorrow afternoon? Yeah, very tough. I, I do expect that Bristol are going to have a similar performance this season like the one they had last season. I expect a very tough team, especially away from home. They were one of the best teams away from home. I think it's a team that they will try to leave no gaps and, and try to break us down on the break, but as well they play. Uh, they, there's a team that is flexible tactically as well. They, they can play three different systems. And, uh, and they come as well with a hunger that they know that they lost the first game at home, so they have that. But obviously, we are in a different position because we had the three points on Saturday. And tomorrow, we, take, uh, uh, we, take, we, can, uh, we can go into that game knowing that it's very important for us being at home. It's very important for us to, to get something. But, but they need that, that point, and Bristol is strong. So we're going to need all the support that we can get 
from everyone and from my players, like I said before, to show a lot of maturity, a lot of focus, a lot of hunger and, and a lot of mentality to approach that game because it's not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. Finally, just uh, any injury news ahead of tomorrow, Kerry Moranti and Jack McGowan in particular? No, apart from them, everyone is available mm -hmm. and everyone knows and understands the importance of the game. Is a very good spirit in the squad after the result on Saturday, but everyone is very focused on, on how to tackle a, a tough game at home and and in the injury department, apart from them too, that we don't expect them to be long, uh, it's nothing else.